Welcome back to thecrushedcrowd.com. I'm your host, Mikey. Today's tutorial, we're gonna be working on the crystal ice hat. And this is a really interesting look and this is a closer up version. Now you should know that on this example, the brim has not been done properly, but on the example that we're going to be working on today, it will be done properly. So if you're looking at this saying that your hat doesn't look like that by the time you're done, that's because it's not supposed to. This hat has a really unique looking uh, feature. It's called crystal ice. It does remind me of crystallizing ice when it goes along, you know, like snowflakes. Really interesting design. You're going to need three colors for this and today I'm using the Boston by Schockemeyer and I'm gonna be using just three random colors that I've chosen and I have this example that I'm gonna show you in just a few minutes and basically these are 50 gram balls and you're only gonna need one ball of each. And today you're going to be using a six and a half millimeter size K crochet hook. You'll notice in the pattern that it says uh, size K and then six millimeter which does not exist uh, in uh, preparations for this tutorial. I did use a six millimeter crochet hook a size J and it was too small. So you make sure it is a size K six and a half millimeter to start. So here's a closer up version of this. We're going to be doing some camel stitching just like you see here and then we're going to be getting into the zigzagging formation. Now this pattern is so easy. I will tell you that the decrease even though it looks like it's decreasing up here in actual fact does not happen until the last six lines of your project. So in actual fact it's almost like a tube up until the very last moments and then at the top we're just going to sew everything together. You can add a pom pom or tassel or whatever you prefer at the top. Now when we're working on this let's turn this inside out and you'll notice that the inside looks very different. So you can see that the rows actually exist all the way around. So in here even though it appears that the pink is stepping up like this in actual fact it is continuing along but because we're doing the front posts a double crochets or treble crochets here that it just covers over that pink area to make it look like it's hidden. It's actually very much a visual effect when we're doing it. When we're going to be doing this when I was doing it I thought to myself I want to get into this zigzag right away but in actual fact what we're going to be doing is starting off in the brim first and then we do three levels of this crochet before we get into the fun stuff of doing the zigzagging. Once we get to the zigzagging it makes a lot of sense and it's really easy to follow. So what if you don't want a woman's size? I'm going to tell you the secrets on how to change the size of this hat. So because there was a discrepancy in the size of the hook in the pattern from the way I saw it, it could change by the time you end up seeing this uh, particular written design, is that I realized that the hat was not going to fit me if I was to do it for myself. Now I wouldn't wear these colors specifically but it's great for one of our mannequins. And what I realized that what is the combination in order to make it bigger for myself and what I realized is that there's actually four stitches in between see these blue markers here? So the blue coming down. There's four stitches in between that plus that. So that means that there's a combination of five stitches in order to have a duplicate pattern. So what does this mean exactly? Well we notice that when we start this you'll have a combination of 50 chains to start. Now I noticed that I needed a bit bigger so I went 55 and because I did that I ended up having the stitch work equal all the way around. So if you want to make this a kid's size all you have to just do is that when you chain your, your chain your um, chain, <laughs> when you go to chain your chain, keep it in groups of five. So one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Get to the size chain, measure that chain around your forehead and as long as it's in fives this pattern will work out even every time. Now when you're going to do the top there is a combination of six rows that finally at the end in order to bring it together. So when you're growing this up you just have to be conscientious that when you get to a certain size that you just need the final six stitches, uh, six rows in order to make it more narrower at the top. So without further ado let's grab my Schockemeyer Boston yarn and let's get started. So let's begin our chain. I'm going to be following the pattern exactly except for the crochet hook. I am going to use a size six uh, millimeter. Reason for it is, is I do like the comfort grips instead of traditional hooks and the comfort grip does not come in that size. So it's just for my own personal use. So this can actually be for a teenager size hat if you really wanted to by reducing the hook uh, to the six millimeter or size J. So let's uh, start off with the slip knot to begin and let's uh, begin our pattern and it says to chain 50. Well remember what I just said about all of the stitch work? It has to be in groups of five. So 50 makes sense because <laughs> divide 50 by five and you have your number. So let's uh, begin. We're just going to start off and go one, two, three, four, 
and five and go all the way to fifty or take the chain and measure it around your forehead and if it doesn't fit then just add another five. If it's too big then just subtract five. So when you get to your fifty or etc. So continue to do that and I'll meet you back here in just a moment. I now have my 50 up and basically I wanna take this chain and I wanna make sure it's not gonna twist. So when I just extend it I make sure that the stitches are not gonna turn over on themselves and I make sure that when I go to attach it to the other side that there's no twist within this chain. It just makes it look a lot better at the end. So just carefully going along making sure I'm untwisting it make sure it makes sense and when I get to the end I wanna make sure then I slip my hook into the beginning chain and then we grab our yarn and then we pull through to form a slip stitch like so. So basically I now have my starting ring and you can try that on to see if it's gonna fit. It will not shrink much so if it doesn't fit now then it will not fit later. Let's begin our first round, round number one. We're going to chain two. So one and two and we're going to half double crochet. So here's my tip. I would take that chain and get the back loop only. So you normally would have your front loop uh, right on the top. I would take it and make sure it turns over and get the back loop. So we just half double crochet into the back loop. Once you do the first one the rest of them the chain will stay turned over and it just makes it a very nice finish on the front of your hat. There is no borders to add to your hat and so basically once you do the first one the next one is just available. So please half double crochet all the way around on this chain and then we're going to slip stitch and then finish off this round. So now coming all the way back around and I have actually finished my rotation. You think that there's more space there but there's not and we just wanna join it to the top of the beginning. Okay, so when we do that we wanna make sure that there's no weird twists so that it does look like a fan belt if it's if it was in a car but make sure that there's no twists inside anything here. So let's uh, begin. I'm just going to turn it in a way that makes sense for me and we're going to begin starting working on the camel stitch. So let's uh, begin rounds two to four next. Okay, we're going to begin rounds two to four and I'm gonna show you how to do it and then I'll leave you to do those rounds on your own. So look how I'm looking at the project. So in actual fact the hat is closest to me here and then I'm looking at it coming around this way. And the reason why I'm doing that is that it's for that I can see the back loop to create the an actual camel st uh, stitch that we're gonna do. So to start this stitch we're just going to chain up two and remember in crochet we have the front loop back loop, both of them equal stitch but what, what we want to do is that we want to get the next one that's in behind. Okay, so what you can just do is go one, two and look for the third one. Once you get that third one in it is so easy because the rest of them will just pop out. So let's wrap our yarn first and we go there's the front loop, back loop but I know it's in behind and I get it from behind. So I'm just going to put it into the back string that's there. See how when I just turn that over this looks like it's the top of the, the regular chain but it's not. It's actually the side of it. So that's an actually neat thing in order to kind of make your um, work turn over. So once you do the first one see how this line just naturally turned over once I did that. So what we're just going to do is that we just count back. So we go one, two and then there's the third or just you can actually see the third now now that we've started to turn it, it'll be very obvious. Please half double crochet doing the camel stitch all the way around on this revolution and this is round number two. Please do this uh, once you get all the way around just join it with a slip stitch start again do rounds three and then do it one more time for round number four. When we come back I'll be on round number five. So please do this same thing for rounds two all the way to four. So I just finished up round number four and basically you will have what appears to be three braided lines just like this. This is the camel stitch and now we're right here on round number five. So let's begin round number five. Very simple. Just chain up one and now we're just going to do a back loop um, single crochet all the way around on this one and essentially it's just really easy and then what, what we're going to do then on the end of this round is we're, we're gonna start changing our colors. So to, we've already chained one so we just look at the stitch. Here's a uh, front loop, back loop together. They equal a stitch but we're just gonna go in the back loop only so that we can keep the characteristics looking 
proper as we go all the way around. This is kind of the secret with this one. So when we come back I'll start changing the colors and I'm gonna show you how to change the colors uh, really effectively. Uh, now because we're changing colors in every round going forward um, I'm only gonna show it once and then you can assume that I've done the same for everything. So back loop double or uh, single crochet all the way around for number five and I'll show you how to change colors at the end of this round. So I'm continuing all the way around. I'm on my very last stitch here and this is the back uh, loop single crochet and I want to join it to where I started. Now here's the thing is that I want to join it so that we are going to um, make sense of it, right? So what we have to do is that we have to join it to the back loop only but this time instead of grabbing the yarn that we're working with we need to trim that down, okay? And so I've just trimmed that down and now I'm just gonna grab the next one color up. See how there's no knots or anything? I'm just gonna loop it around the hook and make that the yarn that I'm pulling through and that yarn will then start the next phase of our, our rows. So what we want to make sure is that when we're using this we wanna make sure both are buried. So make sure it's in front of you just like so and then we're going to start off round number six together. To begin round number six we're just gonna do back loop um, single crochet. So chain one, okay? So then keep these on top and we just want to immediately come down in and we just want a single crochet and we want to make sure that these are trapped underneath. So we're not doing that crystallizing effect yet. We're still only doing single crochets in the back loop going all the way around and see how I'm bearing this color. You will never see it there once we get, uh, once you have your final project done. So continue for round number six just to back loop um, single crochet all the way around. When we get to the end we're gonna change the color to the final color and in my case it'll be like a, a really cool little blue and uh, those are the three colors then for our project and then this is when the fun and games then begin. So do this. I'll meet you back in just a moment. So I've come all the way back around and I do wanna join it. Again do with the back loops and then grab your next color and then we'll just uh, continue to do that and so then this is the blue. This is the final color of the three and on this round what we need to do then is that we need to chain up one just like before and then single crochet in the back loop all the way around again bearing in your loose ends as you go. So please do that and this is round number seven. When we uh, finish this round we're gonna be changing our color back to the orange and we only have three colors so every time these are gonna be in sequence so it'll always be orange, gray, blue, orange, gray, blue. So there's only ever one rotation for each of these colors and then we always change it back to the next color that's ready to go up. So please do this for round number seven back loop single crochet for this color. So here is round number eight. We're about ready to start and I just want to explain a few things. This round is when we start establishing the drop down that makes this happen. Now when we go to do this round what's gonna happen is that you're gonna notice in the next round, round number nine is that we're going to be working in a certain order and you will notice that these will all start filling in line. So you're gonna see a lot of instructions between now and the end but the reality is is that as long as you're following the same pattern going along it's all easy. Now here is the repeat pattern. You're always gonna have have four single crochet stitches right in the middle of these drop downs until you get to a higher point up and to round number 20 way up here. Then that's when you start doing some decreasing. But for the duration of this hat for most of it it's going to be the same. You just have to look for the drop down. So you can either follow the pattern or just, um, just visually look for it and you will see that it will make complete sense. So let's begin round number eight. I've already changed my colors, gotten them all ready. I've got my orange back up because I'm ready to go with that. And it says to um, chain one and it says back loop single crochet in each of the four. So remember what I said to you already is that it said that we were going to be using um, um, uh, like a, a, a now like I said it said that we were going to be using four chains. So we're just going to single crochet back loop only. So why are we doing back loop? You're gonna see in just effect we have nothing to grab onto if you don't use the back loops. So I have one and see how I'm bearing the yarn at the same time. So even though I'm doing this one it makes sense. So this is three and then four and then we're going to do a drop down. Okay? So how you do a drop down is you wrap the yarn twice and you immediately just drop down. You just look the and go all the way back to the orange. So just completely fall down to the orange. Insert your hook going from bottom upward. Wrap the yarn or pull the yarn through and then wrap through two, two and two. 
all the way back to the top. Now it says skip a stitch. So the one that we just dropped down onto, it's just gonna cover that. So you immediately wanna come into the next one available for a back loop single crochet. And I wanna do four more in a row. So that was two, this is two and then three. I'm moving that straggler behind. This is four and let's drop down. So we wrap twice and here's the secret. You can either count these going across. So you can actually count one, two, three, four and five but look at this. One, two, it just drops down. It's the same one. I just counted over five on that uh, orange layer uh, when I went across. I think it makes a little bit of sense especially on the first round to make sure that you're getting all the right stitches going down. So what happens on the end of this round, for example, say that I've added or I've subtracted stitches, I'm gonna show you how to cheat the system because this round is when we start to really establish the pattern and if it's not working right on this round, it's never gonna work on this pattern. So I'm gonna teach you how to fudge the system if you have to. So continue all the way around, chaining our so continue all the way around, single crochet four in a row down on the back loops and then drop down for the fifth, four and drop down for the fifth. So I'm just uh, coming all the way back around and I'm just gonna do this live on camera because if I'm making a mistake, I wanna show you where I'm making the mistake and if I'm not, I'm not, so I haven't actually counted yet. So I've just finished my last drop down here. I still have one more drop down just before I finish. See how there's, it needs one because it's all the way consistent. So this is what we need to do. So I'm just gonna make sure I count over my four. So one, two, three, and four. And look at that. The final stitch is actually right. If it wasn't right, what I would wanna do is make sure that there's four in here some way. So for example, say you only have three left. I would put two single crochets into this spot here just so that on the next round that it would equal and be balanced. So what we're going to do is just drop down again. Again, one, two, three, four, and five. Just like so. And basically we finish off like that with a slip stitch and we are going to start the next one. So you notice where I've done the slip stitch, it's in the first one right here. And how I know that is that it's dropped down one, two, three, and four. If I join it here, then that means that there will be five and I wanna make sure that there's only four there. So I'm gonna just do this and grab up my next yarn which will be the gray and then we're gonna start that next. So here's another super tip for you. When we start this one, we're gonna just chain up one and we immediately jump down and we drop down to the to the gray area here. Okay, so what's going to happen on here from now on, every time we start a new round, the next one is going to sit directly in front of the last one that is here. Okay, so if we start the next one and there's a gray here, then we actually are going to chain up one, do a few single crochets and then drop down. And if you really look at this pattern, you can actually physically see that here. So you have the blue, so this would be like the orange and then it'd be the gray and pink. And so every time we go along, we continue to build up in this direction to the point that it basically restarts itself in order to carry along on the pattern. So that's kind of like a lot of writing but it actually makes a lot of sense. So I chained up one and we're just going to drop down. We're only gonna drop down to the gray and we just wanna be very conscientious that we're only going into the gray so that we can cover that area. Okay, and when we drop down to the gray, we wanna make sure we get these stragglers up and we immediately skip the one that we just dropped down from and then basically there will be four. So basically you have one, two, three and the fourth will be over the last one that's available to you before you drop down again and that just makes a lot of sense, see? So this is the whole point. If you wanted to change your size of your hat as long as you kept them in groups of five when you started um, the chain, this is where it makes the complete sense. So that was four single crochets all in the back loops again and then we drop down. So wrap and wrap. We only drop down to the gray. So just come right down. You can see it's right beside there. Okay. So you'll see that there's four. You're gonna drop down to the first one available to you. And again your eyes will get trained to see this. You're going to skip the one that's in behind that's covering that one and again the next four. So and then that's just one, two and if I've done my math right, the fourth one will be over the last one that's dropped down and so then the next one becomes the next drop down from that point. So please do this. This is round number nine and do this all the way around. So I'm coming all the way back around. So I have my two in there so far. So if there is four, 
single crochets in between two of the posts that are the same color. That means that there should only be four single crochets between this and the final. So I have one, two, okay, three and four and then I just join to the top of the next one here and then I get my next color which will be blue. Let's start off round number 10 and we're just immediately I have my new colors up and I want to chain one but we have to single crochet into the first one first before we can continue because the fact is is that the drop down is right here and we cannot just jump over there. So we have to make sure we single crochet into the back loop only. Make sure we don't forget those back loops I almost just did. So basically you see how this is on top of this line here. So that's where I'm going to do my single crochet into the back loop and now we're ready to drop down. So drop and we drop only down to the blue and we do that for the entire revolution as we go. So again it, it keeping with our theory. Okay so we have four stitches uh, to go before we drop down again. So you can see them one, two, three and four using the back loops only. Okay and I'm continuing to hide my work, my uh, loose ends as we go. Perfect way to do it so that they don't fall out while you're wearing it. And then as soon as you get beyond the one beyond that gray or beyond anything that's dropped down, that's when we drop down for the next. And we only go to the same color that we're working with. I'm gonna get these stragglers out of the way and continue, continue to do that all the way around. Single crochet, the back loops for four and then drop down right after the next color is ready for you. And that'll complete off round number 10. So finishing up round number 10 and I want to point out something to you here. So if we had one single crochet before this drop down, we have our drop down here and we have to keep in theory of the four. That means that we have one, two and then this is three and then we just join it to the beginning just like this. So keep in level with your five and that'll complete off round number 10. Let's start off round number 11. Let's change our color back to orange as we're ready for that color next. Begin round number 11. We're just gonna chain up one first. Now here's the thing is that we have two stitches now before we can drop down again. So as per the instructions it says single crochet in the back loop of the next two. And the reason for it is that you're not ready to do that back drop down yet. So what we want to do is just single crochet in the back loop for two, one and two and that will take you over top of the very last one that's been dropped down right there and now we drop this down here and then we basically maintain again the chaining or the single crochet of four uh, again before we can end up with the next drop down over here and just continue that same configuration all the way around for number 11 and when we come back we'll change the colors back to gray once again. And again once your four is in just drop down to the same color in order to keep that pattern and now you're going to start seeing the zigzagging happening within your hat. Coming around number 11 and again we're just following that same pattern. So now we have two uh, single crochets here and we have one here. This is the final to make your fourth and then we join to the beginning. Oops, see I wasn't supposed to join with that color. Make sure I grab up my gray to start the next color and that finishes off round number 11. Let's begin round number 12. We're just going to start off with our gray and chain one. So here's the thing again. So you look at it and there's three single crochets left before you can drop down again. So what happens eventually as we go along is that in round number eight um, we simply just um, restart again just like we started down here. So we just have to be very mindful of where we're dropping down. So round number 12 we're just going to chain up one which I did and then single crochet into the first three. And that makes sense because you can't drop down any sooner than that. So hopefully you're starting to really see this pattern how easy it is. And now we drop down we have our third in there and we drop down to the, the next gray that's available to you and come all the way back up. Okay we skip the same stitch that's in the back and then just go for your four once again. And this is how you do round number 12. So just again get your four Oops, I got all my stragglers tra trapped in a position there. It does happen. Just kind of pull out and just rebegin again. And it's really no big deal. Just uh, it's just the only way to really hide it without really having to do much work. You get your four singles in a row and then drop down for your next one here to the next gray. 
When we get all the way back to round number 12 on the final, we have now three stitches here and then the drop down. So in order to keep this in balance, we make sure that we do put in one single crochet before we do the join. Just like so to equal our four in between the drop downs. When we come back, we're gonna start round number 13. It's the same as re, uh, round number eight. Very easy. And we're going to start very basically work in the pattern once again. And it will make complete sense in just a moment. Let's begin round number 13, which is the same as round number eight. We're gonna start off with just chaining one. So basically we have now four stitches to go before we do the next drop down here. Round number th uh, 14, which is the repeat of round number nine, this is when we start dropping down first before we begin again to repeat the pattern. So this is the final before we start repeating uh, starting all the way back over here to start back up again. And that will make sense in just a moment. So we're just going to start off and we're just going to put in four single crochets on the back loop only because we need to get to our first drop down position. So if this doesn't make any sense to you at this moment, um, just bear with me. So I got my four because when we come around, we still have to uh, drop down right over here, which is in line. So if you're thinking it's not gonna be in line, it will be because you're gonna drop down here before joining and then the next one when we join, we immediately drop down to start the next um, level. So we have our four in a row. Let's drop down only to the blue section this time and continue that same configuration all the way around. Single crochet four times and then dropping down and so on. And I'll see you in just a few moments as we finish off this round. So as promised on round number 13, again we're just uh, maintaining our four single crochets. We drop down to finish off this round. So the drop down stitch on this particular one is your last stitch because if you look here you have your four before the next drop down and so we're just gonna join it and then let's grab our orange back up and now this is the B repeat when we start actually starting back here first before making our way. So we've been single crocheting more and more and more before dropping down so the next one we're gonna drop down right away and begin that repeat pattern to start back up like you see here. Let's begin round number 14. It's the same as round number nine according to the instructions and it is. So we're just gonna chain one and we're just immediately going to drop down. So here's the trick. This is where we've been slip stitching so it's not always a very nice area to go to. So you have to make sure when you drop down you're just gonna be grabbing some stuff that actually matches the same color. So you, I'm just gonna grab in just a couple of the strings. Now if I just grab this single crochet up here, this attaching, it's gonna pull it up. So I wanna make sure I grab something else plus that one in order to keep it in balance. That's kind of a little cheating trick. And then we finish off that drop down like so. Okay, so it makes actually makes some sense. So immediately we are, we're going to skip uh, the first stitch that we have and then the next four are going to be your single crochets. So you know how to do this already. So this will be uh, round number 14, same as round number nine. And we get our four in a row and then we drop down after that which will be after the blue that we just see right here. So then that's when we drop down next. So when we, uh, we basically are starting to repeat the pattern just how we started with uh, just building up on its side just like so. So continue that and that will be round number 14. Coming up on the end of round number 14, which is the repeat of round number nine, again, so we've dropped down immediately. That means that we have to have four single crochets on this side of that in order to make this stay in balance. And once we get our four in, that's where we slip stitch to the top of where we drop down and let's get our next color up and ready for round number 15. Let's begin round number 15. It's a repeat of round number 10. So it just immediately chain up one and we are immediately, our first one is a drop down. So that means that we have to single crochet first to make our way over before the next one is a drop down. And we double wrap of course coming down to the gray area and then that is the whole start of this whole particular round. And again, just four in a row making sure we grab our stragglers. I was getting lazy on that round. You don't wanna get lazy on that stuff because it will fall out if you don't secure it enough in there. So immediately just single crochet four times across. So it's one, two, and three. This is four and then drop down. And this will be how you do round number 15 which is the repeat of round number 10. Now finishing up round number 15. Okay, so we have one single crochet on this side of it here. We have two here. This is the, th the fourth right here. So we have one, two, three and here's your fourth. And let's join your next color 
on board. In this case, it'll be blue. Round number 16 is the repeat of round number 11. Let's uh, see, let's chain up one first. And now what we have here is that we have two single crochets in the way before we can do our first drop down. So immediately we're just going to do two single crochets in the back loop. Again, hiding our stragglers before we start the next drop down which is the one right after it. And then we have our four stitches in a row, single crochet in a row and then we drop down again for this particular round. So we actually haven't even started decreasing yet and we don't decrease right into the end of this project when we pull everything together. So again four in a row and I think I just skipped over too many here because I didn't have my four and essentially one, two, three and four just like so. And so you just have to keep in balance and once you do that you will win every time. So one, two, three, four and here is the drop down just like so. So continue that same revolution all the way for round number 16. Finishing off round number 16 again we have two on this side. We've just done our drop down. That means that we only have two left on this side in order to complete that four uh, single crochets just like so. So let's change our color back to orange. Okay, we have round number 17 which is the repeat of round number 12 and we just chain up one and now we look for it again. So we have three stitches in the way before we can do our drop down. So that means that there's three single crochets. So I've actually have this pattern in my brain already because I'm just looking for the key concepts in order to, for it to make sense. So I have three and then we just do our drop down at that point to the next same color. Like that, skip a stitch and then do your four. So do that all the way around and this will be round number 17. Let's finish up round number 17. We have three on this side before the drop down. That means that we only have one on this side before we finish off and then just join it. And then let's bring back our gray color next. Let's begin round number 18 which is the same as round number eight and we simply just chain up one and then we have four to go before we drop down again. So we've already done this before. So that just makes a lot of sense. So we're just going to make our way over there. So one, two, three and four. So now we're going to drop down next. So when we come back to the other side we're going to drop down just before and join it and then we, we are actually you can start seeing that we're doing the repeat pattern once again. And it's just really easy. So this is round number 18. Let's finish up round number 18 and we've done the drop down. We do have our four single crochets on this side and so when we go to join it then I want to join it back with the color blue. You should know that before we actually get to the decreasing we do we'd find we you should know that before we get to the decreasing that we actually have um, we get back to the main color of the brim before we do so. So that might help you understand this pattern even more. Let's begin round number 19. This is the final round before we start the decrease. We're going to chain up one and this is like round number nine and number nine. We remember we started and we just dropped down immediately so we're going to wrap and wrap and we come down. Remember what I gave with advice before just kind of just grab a couple more strands of the same color of the blue in order to make this work. It's because we are using the same area as the single crochet um, down here so we just have to make sure we grab everything properly like so. Okay, so here's what happens if you don't grab enough strands. I wanted to do that kind of on purpose to be quite honest with you. So I want to show you that if you don't grab that you're going to end up that with that pull. So we just want to make sure we grab something else in the same color line as that blue. Could be just make it look good and then grab that same one to keep it in balance and then pull your yarn through and then that basically by grabbing the other one it will stay in balance and look even better. So we, we did that. So that's good. So now we want to do our chaining of our single crochet of four. We make sure we skip the first one and then just on the back loops. So this is round number 19. The row before we start doing the single or uh, the decreasing. Decreasing is actually only three rounds. I said it was six earlier in the tutorial but it's actually only three and I don't know why I was thinking it was six. <laughs> so anyway I'm getting my four single crochets in a row and now this one is the drop down again to the blue. 
just like you see. Uh, off camera what I have been doing is I have been trimming the, the yarn as I've been going along so that you don't see any yarn strands inside. So once I bury it enough into the distance here I've just been taking my uh, scissors and just cutting it whatever's left to come out and therefore it won't be hanging out of the hat later on in the project just like so. So continue this whole revolution single crochet for four and drop down single crochet and drop down and this is the final one before we start doing the decrease. So let's finish up round number 19. Remember we have three here. We don't have anything in here so that means that we make sure that we do get to the four on before we join here and let's join it back to the orange and then we're just going to start doing the decrease next. The decreasing is so easy it's not even funny. So let me show you how to do that next. Let's begin round number 20. It is now a decrease round so this means that we're going to start getting smaller and smaller as we go. The decrease rounds are so simple. I was actually a lot more simpler than I ever expected it to be. So let's say begin in the instructions. It says the chain one and it says to back loop crochet uh, single crochet in the first. So this makes sense because this is the drop down and this is the first stitch that's available to us. Okay again working on the back loops only as we continue. So we've done the back loop single crochet so now we're going to drop down because that makes sense right? That's what's next for us to do. And so we want to keep this pattern looking as consistent as possible and so we're going to do our decreasing in the center points or almost to the center points of in between these drop downs. So it says to skip the next stitch which is the normal right? We would have always done that and so you end up having four stitches left just like so. So it says back loop single uh, uh, crochet into the next stitch. Okay, so the next one that we go to is normal. Okay, so now we have two, uh, three stitches left. So the next two are going to come together. Okay, so what that what we're going to do is that we're going to put them together. So we're, this is how you do it. So you insert your hook into the back loop, grab the yarn, and pull through. You go into the next one, grab the hook, uh, yarn, and pull through. You now have three loops on your hook pull through all three. So you just now made two stitches into one and then you um, just back a si uh, single crochet in the back loop for the next one. And let's repeat the pattern. So let's repeat this again. So I'm going to wrap and wrap. I'm going to drop down first. I know it's hard to see with all these loose ends going on. Okay and then what we want to do is skip the next stitch or skip in behind which is the one that would be covering it. So we have four stitches left. So the ne the first one that we normally do we're going to do the single crochet and the next two come together. So we're going to put those together. So wrap and through, wrap and through. You have three and then the final one which is the, the final drop down is just a regular single um, crochet. So again drop like so. Whoops. Drop like so. So the first one is normal. The next two are together and then the final one is the next is the drop oh it's the one over the drop down just a regular and continue that same all the way around and basically you're taking out one strand or one stitch in between these posts that we're dropping down on. I'm coming all the way around on round number 20. I've dropped down again handle it the same way. We're going to do the first one as normal. The next two are together. And guess what? You have a single crochet already. So what you want to just do is just join it together. Okay? So that oh, so when we join it we want to make sure we got the next color up. So that's uh, I'll leave you here and let's change our colors and we're going to go with gray next. So let's begin round number 21. Very easy. We're just going to chain up one first and then what we're just going to do then is single crochet in the in the top. Okay? This is right where the other one that is dropping down. We're going to single crochet there. Okay? So let's begin. We're going to drop down first to keep consistent with the pattern. There is less stitches. There's no longer four in between all of the all of the pieces that we have going on here. So what we need to do is that we need to pay attention. The next two will be together. So we've got to make sure we skip over the one that's in the back that's covering and the next two are together. Okay and the last one we did the regular and then um, put two together and then regular. So in this case we went right to regular and then we're over top of the next drop down for a regular uh, single crochet. So drop down 
like so. And then the next two are together. So you make sure you do skip that one that you're supposed to be covering and then the one right on top of the next drop down is just a regular single crochet. Please do that all the way around. And we have one more round to go and then we're done. Finishing up round number 21 we want to make sure that we keep the last part being consistent and we just join everything together. And we just want to make sure that when we go to do this the final stitch that we're pulling through will actually be um, the new yarn which will be in this case be the color blue. So we have our new yarn on board and we just want to immediately just start uh, going along. So what we're just going to do is that we're just going to chain up one and back loop um, single crochet decrease. So the next two are going to be two together and they're going to be decreasing. Okay and that will take you right on top of the one that's dropping down just like so. And then the next one is a drop down. So we're still going to drop our down, <laughs> drop it down and come down. But this time we have less stitches to work with. So the next two, so we're, this is the one that is over top. The next two are only here. And so those two are going to come together. Like so. We drop down. Like so. We only have two stitches left on here because this one is covered remember and then we just put the two together and continue that all the way around and when we come back we're going to be finishing this hat off. We're going to sew it together on the top and I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. And we're coming all the way back around. Remember we have to keep consistent with this and we have the drop down here before we finish off. And now we just basically just join it with the slip stitch using the same color. This color what we're going to be doing then is that we're going to be cutting this extra long and we want to use this as a sewing mechanism for us. I want you to pull this straight out like this. So now we have it nice and tight. We're going to use the end just like so and I want you to grab a darning needle and we're going to do like a clothesline effect. I'm closing the entire top at this point and just let's finish it up. Just feed it in. So we're just going to come in the same direction. I've been going all the way around in the same direction. I'm just going to go in and out of the, some of the stitches. I'm going every other stitch. You can go every stitch if you want to. I found that every other one is suffice and we're just immediately just picking up everything. You notice I'm not pulling it tight yet. I'm just kind of making it look like it makes sense going every other one. And I want to go all the way around before I do that final pull. You can add tassels or anything to the top of these. It's kind of cute. It's a neat idea. I really like this design. It's been really a lot of fun to work with. This is my fourth hat if you can imagine. And basically now that I have gone all the way around I'm just going to hold it and pull it. And basically it will all come together on the top nice and strong like so. And so now I just want to take this darning needle go across to, uh, completely across like so and then I want to come in the other direction. So I, if I went this way I'm going to come in this direction now. Just, just getting a few plies in there just enough to hold it. So now going down. Now I want to slip the needle down directly down the middle and I want to turn the hat inside out. So if I missed any strings I need to cut I'll find that out. So here it comes through the other end like so. So I have missed a few strings along the way. We're just going to snap those out of position and because I buried them I can safely cut those as I've been working along. So up through the middle I come and all I just want to do is do is just bury it behind a few of the, the, the fibers tying a knot as I'm going and I would be for sure that this hat is never going to fall out at this point because it's nicely and secured. Trim off your loose hands or uh, loose ends. <laughs> I think it's been a lot very long tutorial process for me today and I can turn it inside out or inside right. <laughs> I can turn it the way that it's supposed to be worn and you can see that I have a nice really fabulous hat. I got a kind of a loose end hanging out there. We can just trim that make it all look pretty. 
Oh my, I almost cut a good string. <laughs> oh, that would be a nightmare. So what we have today is just a fabulous hat. You can see that it matches the original and it's really kind of fun at the same time. Thank you. Thank you so much to Shakamire Yarns today for sharing us with this free pattern. And on behalf of the crochet crowd.com, I'm your host, Mikey. Have a fabulous, fabulous day. Bye-bye.